Bones, how are you? I'm good, thank you, Alex. How are you? Yeah, I'm all right. Actually, before kind of asking a bit about yourself, I just wondered if you could kind of give me a brief summary of what it is you do and who you work with and what you get up to. So the main thing I do is like photography and videography. So I get asked to take photos and videos of bands when they perform live and portraits and stuff. So uh, the main bands I kind of work with are Yonaka, Retro Video Club and Only the Poets. So yeah, I do that. And then I also, uh, I've been putting on shows a number of years since moving to Edinburgh. And I also scout for a label called Lab Records from Manchester. Yeah. So what point did you actually begin to get into music? Was it when you moved to Edinburgh or had you... Yeah, you so I came from a very small village where music was not really an option. So my first gig was when I was 17. I went to watch Don Broco play at the Liquid Rooms, which was interesting because I had never really listened to them before. I love their music now, but before it was just like, okay, what am I listening to? But... um yeah, I just kind of got into that and then I did events at college which then everyone was doing like weddings and like, I don't know, like charity stuff and I was like, I quite fancy putting on gigs. It was quite cool when I went. So that's when I started getting into music. What was the first gig you stuck on? Oh God. Um, I actually worked with a guy called Steve Mackay, Pirate Steve, and uh I sent him a message about kind of doing marketing and stuff for events and the first one that I was at and helped with like I filmed a video for the band was Glass Caves at the Voodoo Rooms that's the first I remember and then I kind of just kept on going along and helping him so that was the first one but then I did a lot of um, events with Bottle Note which was an old Edinburgh band they're not kicking about anymore but I did stuff with them and then yeah just kind of just helped like the retro boys when they put on their shows and then obviously they stepped up a bit since then so <laughs> yeah. so did you put on shows for the retro boys before you started photographing just, for them uh no so i actually the second ever show i did was model airplanes at caves and retro supported didn't know who they were hated their music but kieran followed me on twitter so uh and then like a year later Kieran sent me a message saying that they were playing a party in a house or playing a show in a house and they needed someone to take pictures and do video. It was them and Cheap Teeth. And I was like, yeah, for sure. And then he was like, how much do you want to get paid? And I was just like, I have no idea. That was the first paid thing I ever did. So I was just like, just whatever you can afford. So I can't remember if they actually paid me or if they just paid me in beer. Because I remember Kieran just throwing cans of tenants at me, which was funny. But yeah. So I started doing video and photo stuff for them originally and then just kind of like helped Sam with like the marketing and everything. And then, yeah, just kind of just kind of ran with it with stuff. So kind of felt like an extra member of the band. Kind of been with them like the whole way through their progression to... Yeah, definitely since they've there. started to make a bit of noise, which is good. It's nice to see. So do you think they've kind of like helped you with... Have your careers kind of progressed at the same level and at the same time? Has that kind of been... Yeah, things like, that I've, like I hate to say it, but I think if I didn't work with retro from when I did to like now, like my style of photography would be completely different. I don't know if I'd still be doing it. Like just, I they've given me a huge opportunity. I, I hate, I hate giving them like positivity and stuff, but nah, like it's great to see them do well. And yeah, they're definitely the reason or one of the reasons why I've done well with the photography, I think. Yeah, and I mean, in terms of style, which you mentioned there, how has your style like developed since that first house gig to taking photographs of bands now as well as well, retro? with retro, it's different because it's just all black and white. <laughs> so, I mean, nothing's really changed with that. But I think I've been told by people that my style is quite good in the way that it captures, like, the atmosphere of shows and, like, the emotion rather than, like, commercial photography that you might see in, like, newspapers and stuff. Like, I think I do that quite well. And then, like, the colouring as well is just... It's not, like, just high contrast and shadows and stuff. I think it's, like, a bit greeny, yellowy coloured and... Yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, in terms of, like, retro, like, what you said there about them still being in black and white, do you think that's going to be part of, like, how they become successful? Do you think that's important to a band to have that, like, aesthetic at all? I think they... I think 
you recognise their posts if you follow them because it's all black and white. It is eye catching amongst like a very colourful feed that you'll probably have. But then at the same time I don't know how long they'll keep it like that. I mean I don't know if they'll change, if they will change then I have to change as well. So. <laughs> but no, I think I think it is good. I think it works well with them. I think more bands need to have like an image that's recognisable rather than just like bog standard. Yeah. And I mean, is that something that you're conscious with like the photographs that you take? Like if you're taking photographs for only the poets, do you want them all to kind of have a similar look to them? Um, all, or? I think like with the poets guys, we'd, we love to capture like the crowd in them. Like they want to, because they're an unsigned band and they're shifting tickets up and down the country. So they want to be like, by the way, we're doing this. Like it's real people in real rooms, as Sam always says, like the manager. And so with them, it's kind of just capturing that. Then, like, with Yonica, it's very, like, I like it to be, like, really bold and, like, in your face and, like, not, not like, vintage but, like, I use the flash gun for everything, so it's, like, really bright and in your face, whereas, like, with retro, with the black and whites, it's, like, really dark. Like, a lot of it's, like, more black than white for them. So it's, like, always conscious of doing that when I'm taking pictures of them. So I guess with each band comes as, like, a style. But then... It's like a discussion had with them before as well, like what kind of thing they want and what they like and try and replicate it, I guess. And I mean, I'm interested as well, like in your kind of perspective that you have from being in your position, like as a photographer, your perspective, like on the music industry and stuff. So like, in terms of like retro getting signed and I'm saying only the poets not being signed, what kind of a difference does that make to a band? Is that still quite a big thing getting signed to a label? I think the idea of being signed to a label is a lot better than it actually is. I mean the obvious benefit of being signed to a label is financial like i mean to an extent some might just not really offer you as much money as um you'd hope but um i don't know i think poets they're doing well and they'll definitely get signed because i mean they're playing like scala in london like you don't do that without being like signed so it's pretty crazy no, I think getting signs like a step that every band needs to do. But I mean, an obvious example of like someone who's not been signed and been successful is Chance the Rapper. Like they set up their own label because he was like selling out venues around the world easily. And I mean, like they they didn't need that label backing. So I guess, I mean, for some bands, like I think the idea of being signed is a lot better than it actually is. But I mean, I guess everyone does it. So yeah. I mean I guess like with Chance the Rapper it gives you a bit more control and you're kinda mm -hmm. you're a lot more in control of your own destiny and your own future and where that's going. Yeah. Which is probably one of the benefits as well of being a gig photographer is that like you're your own manager and you know you yeah. get to choose what you want to do as Definitely. opposed to bands in the industry that yeah that don't get that so much. But then I guess being signed to a label offer awful also offers um contacts that you won't have. So like like retro signing with lab and getting management through that as well well not through that but they got management at the same time it allowed them to like meet people like the Hunter, where they eventually went on tour with like barnes courtney and stuff like that which i mean they would not have got that opportunity if they didn't have that management or that label well I'd, i mean they might have eventually but they wouldn't have from that point <laughs> speeds up speeds yeah. up things a bit to yeah, def yeah yeah definitely i mean you've obviously dabbled in management a bit as well yourself is Tried. that <laughs> is that something that you would come back to do you think in the future is that oh, 100% like I'm studying music business now and like I'm really interested in management and um booking and marketing and stuff like that so yeah I think just like the I feel at the minute the photography is like my main focus and it's like taking up so much time it's like I think like if I was to try properly to manage a band i wouldn't be able to offer them the time that they actually needed which i mean is a big thing but um no i think yeah uh yeah 100 percent want to manage bands in the future yeah and i mean what sort of bands are you into at the moment that are kind of kicking about up and coming ones that you would recommend well i mean um kind of depends what level you think up and coming is i guess so like you could say bands like uh retro is still up and coming and I'm, I'm a big fan of them and like yonica as well they i mean i don't know if you'd still class them as up and coming but like from like scotland for example there's um like gallus which is they're 
killing it a class yeah yeah pleasure heads as well i went to see them at tuts like swim school they're doing really well so do you always photograph at gigs or do you still go to gigs where you don't photograph and you just go and enjoy um that used to be like a really bad thing like i couldn't go to a gig without taking pictures and if i went if i like bought a ticket and didn't have my camera i'd just be constantly trying to take pictures on my phone but recently i've been to probably been more to gigs and not taking pictures just as like watch new bands or like watch friends play then like taking pictures now it's like i'm trying to make it more of a business rather than a hobby so it's like if i can't get paid to shoot i'll probably just try and go and watch it anyway <laughs> but i think I've, I've always had a thing where like i'll take pictures of bands i enjoy so like if i don't like the music i won't be like passionate to like take pictures of it so it'll probably be like not that interesting pictures i'll get so i think that's something that i've found really important as well yeah i mean i guess that applies to everything i find the same thing when doing my interviews that if it's a band whose album you love it's so much easier to make good questions and chat to them as opposed to a band that you may be yeah a bit lukewarm on you know yeah you'll know what they like as well like or you'll know what they're like as people as well so it's i think it's a no-brainer yeah work with people you like and is it quite a different experience for you now as well when you go to gigs and you don't have your camera with you yeah it's it's weird it's like i'm not pushing my way to the front or like into the photo pit like asking where i should go in and stuff it's just like kind of being the classic music business or music industry and lingering at the back with a tin of red stripe (laughs) instead of a camera (laughs) and i mean like you speak there about photo pits and stuff and like having to fight to get the best shot and, and things like that what is like the most stressful part of being a photographer and the hardest part of what you do uh oh god that's a good question um i think trying to stand out from everyone else because like like i said like when i'm not at shows with cameras i'll just use my phone and like you saw like like recently there was a huge thing about uh matt healy using someone's phone like a photo from someone from the crowd and he didn't tag them and it like people kicked off about it because he didn't tag the photographer and everyone was tagging their tour photographer jordan but it wasn't Jordan's photo. It was some like fan from the crowd with an iPhone. So it's like, it's scary to think that I'm trying to create a business out of something that someone could easily just turn up and take a picture with their phone. And I mean, with cameras getting better as well all the time now, like yeah. they're going to keep it. Do you think cameras will get to the point on phones where they're like, the same quality as a, a camera you operate on? I don't know. Like, I mean, they're like phone cameras are insanely good for how small they are. And like, my phone's so much lighter and does so much more things than my big heavy digital camera but i don't know i think i, don't know, I hope not <laughs> so what are you shooting on at the moment camera wise um i have a nikon d750 <laughs> and then i also have i've just got a sony a7 III for like uh video work because i've started to take that more seriously now so yeah and i mean how is like obviously you've just started the video work a bit more recently how is that different and what different kind of pressures and challenges come with that as opposed to photography? I think with photos, it's like, it's kind of like you point and shoot and get the shot straight away. And it's very like instant. Whereas video is like, you're trying to capture a whole moment. So like, uh, it's, it's more than just like one moment that you can take in less than a second it's like you could be stood there for 30 seconds trying to capture one thing so it's quite scary because you'll like i'll be shooting photos as well so i'll miss like 30 seconds worth of getting photos if i'm filming so that's kind of like the difference but i think capturing the stuff's like is very similar like same angles same settings and stuff like that so yeah and i mean guest video as well kind of helps to give fans like a bit more not a bit more of an insight you know but it's almost a bit more it's more real yeah yeah it's like a photo backstage could just be posy whereas like like recently i was with des rocks and filmed a bit of him trying to strap this the little like um in-ear pack to his leather trousers so it's like it was just funny because it was like no one else would ever get to experience that moment but i filmed it and now it's on his like social media and everyone's like laughing at it Whereas, like, if that was just a picture, it would have just been, like, okay, someone's strapping a pack. But they wouldn't realise, like, how funny it was. So now they can't. So I guess that's the benefit of video. Yeah. And, I mean, you mentioned Des Rockster. You've obviously just come back from Europe on tour with him and Muse. Yeah. I mean, 
what's that like going to those massive arenas like and taking photographs it's just it's scary it's like i can't i've still not got my head around it it feels like it didn't happen like personally i'm not like a massive fan of mutes but i know what they've done for like musicians around the world like danny who's des rocks is like an unbelievably huge fan of him of him being matt bellamy but um no i think it's just like it was crazy it was like seventeen thousand people have paid to go and watch this one band and then get the experience to watch des rocks who's just like insanely talented as well he's like the new freddie mercury he's just insane so yeah it was crazy I mean, music stage show as well with that. What's it like a massive oh, kind of mo- what's, what is that I, a massive monster thing? It, it got to the point where it was almost like I I can't bear it. It was just like it was so structured and so like insane. Like you go and watch a band play at Sneaky Pete's and it's like four people stood up on stage playing their instruments, singing, and that's it. Whereas music like there was like choreography, like dancers, and like there was like robots and like there's this big inflatable like monster that came out the back for the encore and it was just like what was going on like <laughs> like it, it just like i can't even explain it it's like so strange <laughs> yeah and i mean you you met matt bellamy as well didn't yeah. you yeah <laughs> that was that was weird yeah I actually introduced matt bellamy to dish rocks which is the coolest thing i think i've ever done yeah we met him uh we got the when you go on tour with bands you kind of as a support band, you usually wait to get invited. There's always one night that you get invited to have drinks or like food with the main band. And we had just done Oslo and Copenhagen and it was Berlin and we were just like, oh, this, this has got to be the one. And someone came through from their team and was just like, oh, um, you've been invited to Soho House uh, with Muse if you'd like to attend. And obviously everyone was just like, this is it. This is our moment. So yeah, we went to Soho House and we kind of like walked straight in and all went to the bar and then Matt Bellamy was like sat like behind us and I kind of did a room check to see if they were there and they like looked at me and I looked at him and just did this like really awkward wave and he like got up and came towards us and then I was just like hi <laughs> like panicking and he was just like hey how are you and I was like yeah really good and I was just like I'm just the photographer, but I could introduce you to the band if you want. And he just laughed and he was just like, oh, how's it been and stuff. And it was good. And then obviously let him do the actual talking to Danny and the band. And just kind of went and drank myself away. So, <laughs> But no, it was cool. It was weird. Is that your most rock and roll moment or what's up there is? I don't know. Like um, we did a, there was a, after I went on, first time I did with Yonica was uh, with Bring Me the Horizon. And like long story short after party Ali Pali in London we ended up doing shots with so it was like Yonica me uh the TM Harry Styles and then Ollie and Jordan from Bring Me and it was just like it was really weird because it was like 30 seconds but felt like five years and it was just like how has this happened but yeah that was probably the coolest moment of my life (laughs) I don't think it'll get topped (laughs) otherwise that's something you'll never forget no definitely not it's like yeah what (laughs) this weird are there a lot of those moments like over the last few years that are just kind of ingrained in there that you know you're never going to leave you for the rest of your life they're always going to be yeah it can be it's like when i moved to when i moved to edinburgh it was like i didn't i wasn't expect to do photos and then yeah it just kind of happened and then it's like i've been able to travel around europe and hopefully the world soon i'll conquer it all no i'm kidding uh (laughs) No, but like, Take yeah, it over. yeah, <laughs> but like, yeah, I've been able to travel like up and down the UK with like people I've just met and like around Europe with an American guy who sent me an email a week before we left. Like, it's weird, but it's really cool. And it's like, even if it's moments like in the van and like, just like pissing about, it's like stuff like that. It's just so fun. And it's like, you always hear about like when bands go on tours and like, it's like what happens on the road and stuff it's just like it's like it's so much fun and like i just i just love doing it it's crazy and weird and i can't believe i get paid to do it it's like what <laughs> just hang out with mates it's cool it's really cool so i mean when you shift to Edinburgh to take it back to what you're saying there you didn't know you wanted to be a gig photographer how old no. were you when you when you moved to edinburgh so uh i moved to edinburgh when i was 
19 because I applied to uni and didn't get in. So then I had to go to college and went through clear. I went took a year out and then went through clearing and studied events, which is probably the only subject you don't need to study for. <laughs> but yeah, I did that because I wanted to move away from home and wanted to move to Edinburgh. And then yeah, and then like I said before, I just met, wanted to do gigs, so then started doing that and then started doing photography through promotion. So it was just like kind of like fell into it in the most random way, but it was cool. Yeah. Is it ever scary to think back, like, if certain things hadn't happened the way you did, you could have very easily not been in it? 100%. It's like the whole Yonica thing came about almost a year exactly. I got asked to shoot a tenement trail last year, and I looked through the lineup, and I was like, cool, Yonica are playing, like, big fan. Cribs playing, Blinders. uh, And I was just like, I'll just send all these bands DMs on Instagram and see who reply and yonica yonica replied being like yeah we'll have like 10 15 minutes free before the show if you want to shoot portraits i was like awesome because i was like i'm a huge yonica fan anyway like I, i've bought all their merch now i'm kidding they gave it to me but i i like went to their sneaky peach show when they played there and just like been following them for a while and then i was like sweet this is a cool opportunity took the pictures then did a live show i like didn't even shoot the cribs i just edited the yonica pictures like got on the train went back shot edited straight away sent them to them they were like whoa these are insane i was like really <laughs> like cool and they were just like what are you doing in november and i was like huh and i was just like uh uni but i can be free <laughs> it's like why and they were like oh we're doing this tour bring me the horizon like we want you to come and i was just like get out like I have posters on my wall of Ollie from Bring Me. They're my sisters, but like they're on my wall. And it's just like I got the opportunity to like meet him and go on tour with him. And then, yeah, like, so it's just like a DM led to me being able to go on that tour. And then I've done two tours since, doing another one in November. And then like people who have seen my work through Yonica have like contacted me and asked, oh, can we do a shoot? And like that's led to more work. And it's just like, it's weird it's like one dm has led to literally like my career at the minute so it's weird it's scary yeah and i mean you started off and doing interviews for a bit as well didn't you before you could, yeah, uh... <laughs> yeah. Well, back in the day <laughs> yeah so i set up a blog because i realized i can't get into shows without a photo pass i can't take photos at shows without a photo pass and i can't take photos at shows without a portfolio and i didn't have a portfolio and so that means I just couldn't get into shows. So I was just like, right, so I'll just be like sending photos to bands. So I'll DM bands. Half the time they just wouldn't reply. So I was like, because I didn't have any work. So then I was just like, well, if I'm just going to send it to blogs, why don't I just set up a blog? So then I would start reviewing shows or I would like start reviewing songs and stuff. Then I would send messages about reviewing shows. Then I'd be like, oh, can we send a photographer? I would use we, but it was just me doing this. And then I started shooting it. I did it for about half a year, like nine, ten months, and then got asked by other blogs to be their photographer. So like two blogs which don't exist anymore, like Club Decode and Vinyl Noise, like they were the two that were at the time, and they were just like, "Oh, would you be up for shooting for us?" And I was like, "Yes," because like I realized my English is very limited, and my interview questions were incredibly boring, unlike yours. So I was just like, yeah, sweet. That means I can stop doing the interviewing and reviewing and just do photos, which is what I wanted to do. So, yeah, that was good times. <laughs> and I mean, you mentioned there are two blogs that have now closed down that you used to shoot for. Yeah. Is that something you notice a lot? Like a lot of people kind of fallen by the wayside as you've kind of kept going. Has there been a lot of people that have been mm. in music that have kind of fallen away? But... Yeah. I, I, like, I know that Alice still, Alice was one of the twins that ran Final Noise. She still works and uh she's like she moved to canada or something and is and she still shoots shows out there so she's doing really well with that um and kit Carr used to do club decode and she started new wave testament like a new blog and started putting on shows and everything so i think it's more just like i think it's difficult because you're you're into a industry that you don't know and it's like nothing's paid for you pay for everything yourself so everything that you do is like coming out your own pocket so it's like how much you want it i guess like and the opportunities you can get from it so 
I, I think people have like not dropped off but like changed their paths or like some I mean some people have just stopped completely because it is pretty cutthroat like the amount of people that want to be bloggers or like photographers and stuff is scary but it's the same as bands like new bands pop up every day so it's just competitive What are some of the dangers of it, like the freelance industry? Like obviously, like it seems really cool when you you know you're off on tour and all the photos and stuff look amazing. But I imagine there are some downsides to being a freelance. Definitely. Uh, I mean, obviously, that is the impact of social media, like making it look really cool and fun, and you're always busy. But like, that is not true. It is like you can spend fifteen hours in a van and just post one like video of someone going crazy and make it seem really fun but it is really long and tiring but then also like i I could spend weeks on end like not getting any work and i had like there was must have been like six weeks where i had nothing like no income no shoots and that was like i had shoots planned and people bailed like last minute does that happen quite a lot as well yeah Yeah. so like recently i had like a week's worth of work just like taken off me like two days before which was like oh, that was a massive impact on me like not just financially but like mentally as well I was like why did they want to like why did they want me to do it and why did they take me off so I was like doubting myself and then but that was like oh, that was like two days so that was like two horrible days and then the email from uh, Des Rock's manager came through so that was like okay this is sweet so like almost like kind of blessing in disguise but um no, I think it's yeah. The one of the biggest things about like um, uh, being a photographer of music is like it's so cutthroat, and like people can just pick and choose who they want to use. Like they might change the style that they have, so they want to change who they shoot with, and then they can just like be like, "Oh, sorry, I don't have enough money, so we can't use you." So it's like I think everyone's in the same boat, especially when they're starting off. Like money is like a rarity. So it is difficult to make a career from it. Edinburgh is really good in the fact that everyone's super supportive and they'll help each other out when they can. And even if it means that they're not making a huge amount of money or any money, it's kind of like like everyone's supportive. Like, and I think that's so important. Um, but yeah, it's cutthroat in the way that like you can have one thing and it can just be taken from you instantly. Yeah, and I mean, what do you think are some like the biggest challenges kind of facing the music industry at the moment just in general that could kind of Mm -hmm. threaten a lot of the the, i mean it feels like an industry that's kind of losing money in general there's less money in the industry than maybe was in previous years and yeah i mean i think because there's so many bands and so many photographers and so many bloggers and so many things like popping up every day it makes it so like it just makes it so like big so I didn't know another word to use there. Uh, Humongous, dense. No, that's a good one. Uh, that it's like the money's more spread out, and then like breaking through is difficult. So it's like you're gonna be like you could be the one pop band in Edinburgh, and then next week you could be the one of ten, and then be like the thousandth one in scotland and that means like you could be like the millionth one in england and the uk sorry and then i imagine it's just it's so big and vast that's another one (laughs) i mean it it does feel like there's more music out there than there's ever been before yeah in terms of spotify and stuff now that everyone can get the stuff on the platform i think spotify is insane in the way that like a band from edinburgh can be listened to in like melbourne australia and have like less than 5,000 streams or something it's like it's crazy and that's only like a recent change so like it'll be really cool to see how like music like changes in the next like 10 years and then 20 years after that yeah I mean have you like spoken about Spotify I mean when did Spotify start like 2012 maybe seven years ago or something I could not tell you it feels like it's been around forever though (laughs) yeah but I mean it's something that you couldn't have predicted 
No, like, like, back in the nineties, oh, like no one would have seen that coming. Yeah, it was always like back then when it was like vinyl, CDs, cassettes, and stuff, and then it was iTunes and people were legally downloading off YouTube and just all of that was like the music. That was like how people got their music, and then now it's like Spotify and Apple Music and Deezer and yeah what else title and <laughs> just like all of that stuff it's just like you stream it now you don't really buy it like people buy vinyls just so they look indie and cool <laughs> i mean it's the same with everything as well isn't it it's like if you look at like uh well, that's a nice playing podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it's just yeah it's, i mean it's the same with films like if you look at netflix like yeah it's like people kinda, go to the cinema dvds are dead yeah now, you know? yeah yeah, tell that to my mum. She still buys them. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas gift after a year. Yeah, Two yeah. DVDs. Yeah, it's just it's a nightmare. <laughs> Love you, mum. <laughs> I mean, we we spoke earlier a wee bit about like standing out and how you kind of look at standing out and how bands, you know, such as Retro, like stand out in people's timelines. What kind of advice would you have for like young photographers or just people getting into the music industry industry in general for standing out? I think, like photography wise, like find photographers that you like and pick like pick apart their photos so like why do you like them is it because of like the coloring in it is it because of like the way that they are really bright or dark or different and like why are they different i think that's really important like i when i started out i instantly wanted to find out who was the best like people in scotland and um i'd met a guy called ryan johnson just before uh who was a friend of my older sister at uni and I met him at a Hoodie Allen concert in Glasgow <laughs> and he was taking pictures and I thought that was like the coolest thing but that was when I was like 16 so um like I, I hadn't even considered doing photography then and it was still like two three years after that I started it but so I knew who Ryan was and then when you follow someone like it suggests people to follow so like other people were like Stevie Kyle who work with who works with Twin Atlantic and uh, Cameron Brisbane, who does stuff with, like Father Son and pretty much everyone. Vukovi, yeah. Vukovi, yeah. Class band. Very good band, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it's just like picking bits that you like of those photographers and like trying to make your own style out of it. I mean, it's difficult to like create a style when so many people are around, but I guess it's just experience and like practice and developing your talent i mean i guess it's the same with like music as well like you take influences from other bands and you just do the same with photographers yeah. i mean you can't like i think music's a great way to describe it like bands always get compared to other bands so like an example is swim school they always get compared to like wolf alice and pale waves and uh, slow dive and stuff like that but the thing is like they take elements well, I'm guessing they take elements of that music and make it their own. So, like, if they like the drum sound in it, they'll use that. Or if they like the way that it's like can build up into like heavy parts of songs, it's like they use that. And it's like the same way that retro are influenced by like Green Day and Catfish and stuff like that. It's like you can see that in the way that they perform on stage and like the music that they have and like just like the way that they are that like you can just see that now that i've said it you'll see it but before it's just kind of like these hints of it i'm yeah. thinking back to that transmit gig this year just passed but i kind of remember that and yeah yeah conjures up a lot of imagery regarding that yeah it's just like the way that liam plays you can see it in billy joel like even kind of just the way he carries himself on stage a little bit yeah, as well arrogance and, no i'm kidding <laughs> <laughs> you need, swagger, a, you need a bit of arrogance in a band yeah as a front man big diva but yeah <laughs> i mean it must be weird for you as well with them to have gone from you know photographing them at a house gig yeah to then go into what was it brixton academy at like four thousand yeah. well on on so that was with the hunter so on that tour it was they they had played cardiff and i wasn't there and then the day off oh no it was on the day of them playing barrelands was two years to the day of that house party show so it was like, it was the jump of two years. They had gone from playing a living room of 40 people to, I mean, they, they were supporting yet, but they still played Barrowlands to, I think it was, must have been about 2,000 people by the a end of it. A lot of folk there, yeah. Like, so was that House Party Show in 2017? Yeah. I didn't realise that was so 
recent. Like yeah. when you say that, I think it would have yeah, been like 2015 or something. No, no, yeah, it was yeah 20. That's that's weird. Yeah, so they had that. When did the EP come out? It was that was before yeah. that. So they so they were a band for a while before, but like I didn't know who they were and I wasn't really into music. Yeah, I think they just took some time off. Like a couple of them were finishing uni, and then they just really went for it. And that's when I like managed to wiggle myself in there as well. <laughs> And I mean, obviously, like you've had so much success now with like all the gigs. Stop that it. <laughs> <laughs> but like, would, are you interested in like other types of photography? Would you ever do like? Yeah, I, I was literally speaking to Naren earlier about doing weddings. Like, I think the idea of weddings is interesting. Like capturing moments. That it's like music, I guess. It's capturing moments that will last forever. Ooh, cringe, but um, it's capturing like like emotion and stuff again is like what i aim to do in music stuff so i think it'd be really useful and or like wanted in music in wedding sorry and also um the money yeah <laughs> <laughs> there's so much money in weddings so that would be lovely so if anyone needs a wedding photographer <laughs> yeah, probably barn, yeah, please <laughs> but yeah i mean i don't know like i love portraiture i started doing like um I started doing model stuff as well when I was doing music things, which helps lead into doing like band portraits. Like I learned a lot from that and just like clothing things as well. Like I think it's all quite fun and interesting. Like I would love to be able to do loads more, but I think at the minute music is just taking over my life. I'm not complaining, but yeah. I mean, what you're speaking there about the like portraits with bands and stuff, like in terms of when you were first starting off, did you look a lot at like composition and how to frame things or was it just more of a natural thing? Or? It was more just kind of, I, I was really bad at telling people what to do. So I would just be like, this looks like a cool background and they would go stand there and I would just take the picture and I'd be like, cool. And looking back on it, like the first band I did was um, Bottle Note. I was actually thinking about this earlier. The first band that I did a portrait shoot was with Bottle Note and we met in Cab Vol and they were doing building work outside and there was just like the um scaffolding and there's loads of graffiti on this like whiteboard i was like that looks really cool so they went and did it and like my settings were completely wrong my like the way that they were stood was like awful i look back at it now and being like oh if i if i knew what i could do now and knew it then i'd be like that would have been a sick shoot i'll make that the cover photo for this podcast yeah just please that photo. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> But like now I've kind of like I've done it more and learned more about it and not got bossy but like I can tell like oh maybe you two switch or move forward or lean in so it's like yeah I've learned more about it and it's just like trying to capture the vibe of what the band's going for as well and like using the environment that you're in I guess it's part of that part of what makes it exciting is that you're always learning you're always like developing as a photographer definitely and like the best thing about like my favorite portraits have come from tour when we just like go and explore a city and i'll carry my camera and be like go stand there that looks really cool it's like only the poets like we'll go and we'll find a nando's so on the way to the nando's we'll always make a point that we have to do a shoot so like it's yeah it's just funny it's just like you will find or you'll make things that shouldn't work work and that's when like i have to like use my Talent. 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 <laughs> yeah, I hate using that. But like that's when I'll have to use like my experience and everything to make it work. So it's good fun. Yeah. I mean I guess it's part as well when you put limitations upon yourself, that's when sometimes some yeah. of the best stuff can well come out. What another photographer that I didn't mention earlier, a guy called Ronan Park. So he's like done stuff with Ellie Golding, he's shooting for like Rita Ora now, he's just insane. But I met him at Glass Animals show at Liquid Rooms. And I pretended that I didn't know who he was to try and be cool. But I followed him on Instagram and I knew exactly who he was. He followed me back that day, but I think he's unfollowed me since. But we won't comment on that. What have you done wrong? Oh, I don't know. Just jealous of my... No, I don't know. <laughs> Talent. <laughs> Show up. Um, but no, he told me that he had done all his photography to that point and probably for about another eight to nine months after that, just on a 50mm lens. Like, So he's limited himself to learn like how to use that lens like perfectly i think that was like that was so cool just because it's like he's limiting himself he doesn't have to and like i always like when i started out i was always just like oh it's all about the kit but it's not it's like how you use it and that's really cliche to say but it's so true obviously 
once you get to like bigger shows like do more stuff you need to use different kit better kit yeah, yeah but like he was using a 50 mil in liquid rooms which is like a 700 cap room so it's like it was like why like you'd use it in sneaky peats it's like the first lens you'd buy as a photographer but he was like oh i wanted to learn like exactly how to use it and i was like that's really cool so it's like limiting himself and i guess i started doing that with like portraits i'd only use like my 35 or like 35 mil or 50 mil and i would use that for portraits but then yeah it's just like learning it's just developing your skills and have you ever shot on film before or are you always digital i've i've tried i've bought many a film camera that have been broken and faulty off ebay um and i have about seven disposable cameras in my room that i haven't been bothered to go and get developed i'm really excited because of one of them's from like the first trip i ever took which was with indigo velvet down to like leeds or manchester or something another was like like transmit this year what, uh, what do you mean by like disposable cameras just like the ones that you get you know they're like the throwaway ones like yeah the, you have 36 oh, okay. shots yeah, yeah and yeah. then you get you go so i bought them from boots you go back to boots and then you get them developed and then that's it like you'd have to buy another one whereas like the film cameras just like the disposable bits just the film so like what's like the texture of them like like when you look at the photographs is it quite radical to digital or? no idea i haven't, <laughs> haven't got them developed them. no like my i used to use them all the time when i was younger like my dad would buy us them for christmas and we'd use them for yeah. christmas and he'd get them developed and it's like it's similar it's similar to film it's kind of in the middle but i guess it's just a roll of film anyway just in a throwaway camera so i mean i've worked with bands that like film and i'll be like let's try and make my digital pictures film but i mean i know nothing about it and how how close can you get turning a digital picture to look nothing's, like film? nothing's no. as cool as film <laughs> i really want to do it there's a photographer uh i think she's based in glasgow i'm not too sure called dark room memoir did she do like walt disco and yeah medicine done, cabinet and yeah stuff. and yeah, like yeah, ninth yeah. wave recently and stuff and that's some really cool stuff her yeah. stuff's insane and she's just like come out of nowhere like i i don't know if i was speaking to you about it or someone else when we were like talking about walt disco or something and i was just like yeah like her, her stuff is incredible and it's all on film and i have no idea how she does it i really want to know and I think that like, probably I can <laughs> ingrain yourself. I can, because I can like when you're speaking right now, I can see like the Walt Disco shots and like the medicine cabinet yeah. shots in my head. So that's creating her own style. Yeah. See, huh. full circle. Yeah. That's Going talent. Back. Yeah, talent. <laughs> She's very talented. She's, yeah, good, good, very good film photographer. I wanted to, to speak about 2019 for a bit. Yeah. In kind of where were you at the start of the year, and where are you now, and how far have you kind of come in the last? I mean, this has, has a lot changed, like in the last ten months, and yeah i mean so at the start of each year i cringely put out three like goals that i want so i can't remember what last year's was but it was to go away on tour not just shoot in scotland i did that uh do a tour and i did that i managed to get it in november with yonka and then i can't remember what the other one was but this year was do a european tour like do it even if it's just tour like i just wanted to go to europe and shoot and i've been lucky enough to do that a few times like even if it's like one-off things with um an artist i used to work with like p charlotte like we would go we went over in the summer and in the winter to shoot like obviously the des rock stuff recently and with the like yonica as well they went to europe as well so that was that one get my work published so that was like a huge one I, like i'd seen so many people do it and i was like i want that and I managed to get a, like a full page in Rock Sound, which was mad. Then I managed to get um, one in Q Magazine as well. What was and the one in Q? What was the? That was the Yonica portrait. Oh, was that it, the same one they got used to, like the Scott, uh, Spotify? Yeah, and like HMV before. and their yeah, album yeah, yeah, yeah. stuff, and it was crazy. That's on, that's on the album, isn't it? Like on the the vinyl sleeve. I think Is it's it? in there. There's yeah. like all all the pictures in it of mine, and it's like credited, and I find that just ridiculous. Like it's a charted album, and my name's in it. I mean, I had no contribution to the music, but like I guess I took some pictures. Your name's still on it when it's hit. It's got all the credits in there. Yeah, yeah. It's just Rory like photos by Rolling Lines. And recently, worked out that I've been published in your lovely magazine as well. So. I'm sure that's just as prestigious as Q. I mean, I think that's that's <laughs> my goal in life to have your acceptance. 
<laughs> well, you've got to work a bit harder. Oh, yeah, <laughs> young Rory Barnes before you. <laughs> thank you. But nah, yeah, I think, so they, that was two. And then I can't remember what the last one was. But if I can't remember, that probably means I haven't done it. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, you've got three months left. To, yeah, so, to but going. no, I think, yeah, this year is just crazy. I've managed to make photography a career. Like, obviously, I'm still a student, so I get student funding. But, like, I'm not working in a coffee shop anymore, which I was doing last year. Like, I'm working with bands like, monthly, which I didn't expect. And I just find it mad. Like, it's crazy. Here's to 2020. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> what are some of your highlights? What's your favourite album of the year so far? That's oh, God. Um, and favourite single, I guess, as well. Because everyone just puts out singles now. No yeah, one cares true. about albums. Albums. Loyal Corner. That was insane. You shot him as well, didn't you? At yeah, Caves. I've shot him a number of times. I'm just a huge fan. And then, uh, most recently, Sam Fender is just like, he's one of my favourite artists of all time. Another so, artist that you've shot, yeah. <laughs> yeah, again, crazy. I think that's a highlight of this year is being able to shoot for bands that I'm like, I'm a stupidly big fan of. Like, I'll, I, I've listened to Sam for like two years and I remember like putting him forward to lab and just getting patched and being like, this guy's going to be insane. And now he's like selling out arenas or like big venues anyway. Number one album. What was it? 41,000 vinyl sales or physical know, sales? Something ridiculous, yeah. And like I managed to shoot for him at Transmit and it's just crazy. It's like, wow. But yeah, his album was insane. Single wise, I mean, that's gotta give a shout out to uh, swim school <laughs> <laughs> now nah, they they've obviously new band this year the class hopefully they release some nicer music no i'm kidding <laughs> oh, oh, oh. i take a swim <laughs> nah uh <laughs> who's that shouting from the corner <laughs> but now nah, they they're yeah they're really good uh who else joseph is it's amazing how much he shut up like since yeah. he dropped that. I mean, was it Lover Boy that he released? I wasn't like I was unsure about it at first, but now again I was speaking to Naren about it earlier. It's just like it's it's actually a really cool song. I think he's he's got like three hundred fifty thousand monthly listeners. That's mental. That's so, cool. That's very cool though as well, isn't it? That's what it kind of shows you as well what can happen like in a year. Yeah, definitely. Like both bands and as like a photographer like yourself. It's just but. like the preparation and how much you put into it. I guess like um. I've probably not mentioned any music that I actually listen to and I've just taken names off the top of my head. But yeah, no, I think bands that prepare to like work hard and think really think about what they want to do. So like like know the style they want before they start doing social media and like know the music that they want and start doing prep for that and yeah, preparation is key. <laughs> oh god, sound like my dad. <laughs> And to, to come back to, you obviously mentioned Sam then, speaking about how much you loved his album this year. Mm. And you said that you put him forward for Lab. Yeah. I didn't actually really pick you up on that earlier when you said that you're a, a scout for Lab. What all does that actually involve? And like, do you just put forward a certain number of artists a year? Or well, how does I, that work? So that that was really random. That kind of like came about at a festival at 110 Above. And I was like speaking to a guy who used to work there just about like music and what I enjoyed and what bands I liked. And he was just like, at the end of the weekend, he was just like, you've got like a really modern taste. Like you like up and coming bands. And that's like a guilty pleasure. Like I love finding like unheard of bands. And yeah, I just, he was just like, send me an email on Monday and let's chat. And so send him an email and he was just like, look, I've CC'd you in with Mark who owns Lab. Uh, really interested in getting you to do a and stuff. So it's more like, just started his work experience stuff and still is kind of I don't do it as much now but yeah I put forward like five bands every two weeks or just whenever I'd listen to something so like I've I still put forward bands now like I put stuff forward recently quite a lot of those bands have been like picked up by Lab and signed it all or? no <laughs> <laughs> like um oh, who? so the first one was Retro which was cool that was like that was big because it meant so much to them and I mean, it's done so much for them as well. Like, yeah, you know, what we were speaking about earlier, the kind definitely. of opportunities that they've been given as a result of that. Yeah, for sure. Like, I I mean, I, I don't 
put forward music because I'm just like friends with them. Like I'm actually a fan of them and I like their music. I guess like being in your position now as well, like you might often become friends with the people that, because I mean, if you respect and admire someone and you're both working in the same scene, the odds are yeah, you'll end up being pals. Yeah. yeah so like you like, you have mutual interests and stuff. So like, I like, I'm like, they're four of my best mates now. And like, it's cool. Like they were the second band, like third band I ever took pictures of. So it's weird. Like I didn't even know who they were when I took pictures of them. <laughs> it's a bit creepy, but yeah. Uh, who else? Uh, Stereo Honey. They got signed, which was cool. And then I put forward bands and then they've been signed like years later. So like put forward St. Martin's like two years ago, three years ago. They've just been signed to Lab. Put forward like... They're doing mental as well. Just yeah, so. they're so talented. And then I put forward like... I don't even know how to pronounce his name. It was like a guitarist called Yoke Clore. He's just been signed as well. And he had like one track out at the time. And yeah, just like he's just been signed and he's insanely good it's difficult because it's like there's so, there's only a certain amount of bands that people can sign as well so I mean I was sending five bands every two weeks so that's a lot of bands a year and they'll probably sign only a few so a few bands a year yeah. yeah yeah well I mean they've been signing loads recently so I don't know if Mark just got a load of money and wants to throw it away <laughs> I'm kidding <laughs> but yeah like it's really cool It's it was like a really cool opportunity I got randomly like fell into it but it's definitely something I'd be interested in doing as a career as well yeah. cool well thank you very much for your time thank and you that's us thanks <laughs> <laughs>